Hello there ladies and gentlemen, Pricey here. I'm back with some more World of Tanks footage for you today. Uh, today we are looking at Tumus WOT and he is driving the WZ120 Tier 9 Chinese medium tank. Um, this is a right little Bruce Lee of a tank. A little tiny package with one hell of a punch. So he's playing uh, Red Shear or uh, Red Shire for all the people that aren't English. And he's proceeding forward now to the standard spotting bush around the E7 area. And he's going to do a little bit of passive scouting at the beginning of the game. So here he is. He's got to his bush. He's going to try and light up the things that are heading towards the uh, the 9 and 0 lines. The heavy tank typical grinding corner position. Also see if he can, when he's not being spotted, put in a few opportune shots himself. Do a bit of early damage before the game gets going. So... First target's up, it's a Centurion 7-1, he's being spotted by the, looks like the KV-13 or the Awful Panther that's on the ridge over there. And Tumis is having a look, see if he can get a shot. Does fire one, doesn't have a, a silhouette on that, but gets a hit onto the Walker Bulldog and that's his first bit of damage done, 510. And meanwhile, his tank is busy lighting up the heavy tanks that are rolling towards the uh, heavy tank rock there to grind out. And as you can see, there's quite a few of them. So he waits for the, the bulk of the party to go past and fires an opportune shot into the tortoise. Best to take a, a shot at the more valuable tier 9 target than it is to waste a shot at a tier 8 or tier 7 target. Now, I don't know quite what this super person's doing, but he's just seen the tortoise take a, a, a big hit in the side and he's decided he wants to hang around. So Tumas plants one onto him. Uh, fires his second shot at him. It was very unlucky there. That shot sort, sort of that disappeared into the ether. Nobody knows where that one really went. But he does take get the chance for another shot, but he doesn't lead the target too well, and uh, it just ricochets harmlessly off the, the frontal armour. If he'd have led that a bit further by aiming towards where the tank was going backwards, then there's a good chance that one would have gone in, but doesn't matter. He's on 1,400 damage done already. He's lit up a lot of things heading towards the uh, the 9 line. And some of those things have been taking damage from supporting fire from his team. So it's going pretty well so far. His heavy tanks have reached the uh, the rock. Um, for some reason there's a tier 7 IS that's leading the charge. And I don't think he's probably going to live much longer at this rate. Uh, um, yeah, so quite a passive start to the game this one. But this is really what it's kind of like on Red Share. You find a bush, you sit in a bush and you try and spot as many things as you can at the beginning of the game. Let your team shoot them. Try not to reveal yourself too much. And that's exactly what Tumis is doing. So, as well as the 1,400 damage that he's got here, he's pretty much guaranteed to have picked himself up some good spotting damage along the way. So, great success for him. Now, what you're doing, uh, or what he's doing at the moment, after he's finished with his spotting, he's waiting for the team numbers uh, to sort of dwindle down a little bit. And he's also waiting to, um, oh, hold on, got another target. Takes a clutch shot at the KV-5, plants one, lands nicely into the rear of his tank there. Bit of a low roll for this gun. Uh, I believe it's 440 average damage for this gun, so it's a real beast of a gun on a, on a medium tank, particularly a tier 9 medium tank. So that's kind of what the Chinese are known for, really high alpha damage in World of Tanks. They seem to suffer a little bit on the gun depression though, but... You can make that work if you're experienced with the tank and know the maps pretty well. As I was saying, what he's doing at the moment is he's waiting for pretty much the bulk of the enemy tanks to be spotted and accounted for on the mini-map. That way, he knows roughly where people are on the map and what forces are in what locations, what he has to worry about. Once the numbers have been dwindled down a little bit, you get a little bit more freedom to move. For every enemy tank that gets destroyed, then... There's obviously one less enemy tank that's there that can catch you out. Uh, and it opens the map up a lot more, where you tend to find that there might be tanks sort of scattered all over the place in a general front line. Um, you start to get piecemeal tanks and lower health tanks and sort of half HP spread out across the map. And that makes it a lot easier for the things like your medium tanks and your light tanks to go around and do their second half of the game or later game portion of the job, which is to go around on the cleaner using that speed, using that manoeuvrability, picking off these wounded tanks. Now, I do apologise, the replay went a little bit laggy there. Um, that can't really be helped, unfortunately. That's uh, a bit of a problem with the World of Tanks replay system, So, but I do apologise about that. 
Uh, and he puts in a shot there onto the IS-3, fi finds a very, very wounded IS-3 on uh, just 40 hit points, finishes him off. Takes another shot there at the Centurion 7-1, but unfortunately that shot went a little bit higher um, and uh, sort of harmlessly goes over the top of his tank. He's another priority target. Uh, he's already got one kill, that Centurion 7-1, and of course he's in another tier 9 medium, which is also known for having a good alpha damage gun. Not as high as the uh, as the Chinese tanks, but does uh, you know do a lot of damage, has great penetration. And there we go, oh, beautiful shot there. Third person, shoots through the wall and hits him for a nice meaty roll of 437. And uh, Centurion fires one back, but he just blows out the post on the, uh, the, the next to the wall. So it's quite lucky for Tumas. Tumas gets back into cover and, and dodges the shot. Now he's looking for another shot on the Centurion 7-1. But it doesn't look like he's going to get it. He's gone back uh, behind the, the hard cover of that roof over there of that building. So, so he's going to move forward again. See what else he can find. Now, there was an IS around here somewhere. He's just been spotted. That's probably the Centurion uh, at the mid. But it could be this IS. There's an, there was an IS sort of camping around here. And this is probably a better position for an IS in this game. When you're bottom tier, you want to be a little bit conservative with your play. Play more as a sort of a supporting tank. Uh, and he finds the IS, plants in a shot, does does get a bit of a low roll on him, but the IS has only got 1,230 health anyway, so he can still dispatch him in three shots, even really with, with low rolling. And then he gets rewarded, he gets a nice high roll on that one, 467. And now, providing his gun doesn't roll super low, the IS is a one-shot for him. So this is where the gun depression of the Chinese tanks really starts to sort of rear its ugly head. As you can see, look how far he's got to come up before he can get his gun down. He tries to fire clutch, but the shell dips into the floor in front of him. But for some strange reason, the IS is firing HE. Nearly does as much damage with his pathetic ram as he did with his HE shell there. And then Tumas puts in the final hit for 378. So, great success. He's done 3.6k damage, almost 3.7. Picked himself up three kills. And he skirts the cap circle. He doesn't want to... Uh, give away his position. Now, um, I do apologise in advance for this Yag Panther 2 that's on Tumas' team. I can't even pronounce his name. It's But he has been but her as you like since the beginning of the game. He has just done nothing but whinge since the beginning of the game. And now he's given away teammate positions like uh, to the enemy team. And that's not on at all. So, kudos to uh, you, Mr. Yag Panther 2. You get the arsehole of the day award. And uh, I hope I never have the misfortune of having you on my team in a game when I'm playing. Anyway, Tumas has flanked right the way around now. He's located the SU-101 toilet. Kills him off. And he's also spotted a T-43. Uh, I believe that's the Tier 7 medium. So he goes in. Bounces a shot from him. Puts in a meaty one for 449. Gives him a nice ram. Takes 182 damage himself. But uh, does 244 in return. So a good trade. Bounces another shot, hits his reload and finishes him off for the final 307 health. So that's put Tumas on 5k damage and also a pentakill to go with that as well. Five kills. As we can see, the Yag Panther's still moaning. Um, now, as you can see, the cap is well in operation. They've got two tanks in the enemy cap. We can see that's the E75 and the KV5. We desperately, desperately need a, uh, a reset on the cap. And it looks like the T-54 gets the reset. So well played to the T-54. He goes in there and he gets what needed to be done for his team. And he's, he's going to keep his team in the game for this. And what was surely going to be a defeat, they can now have a very good chance of turning into a victory. So the T-54 is doing his best to whittle down some of the heavier tanks. But the KV-5, even for a, uh, a T-57, unless he's spamming the heat at him, is going to be a tricky target to penetrate. And the E-75 is a tough old bird as well for when it comes to tanks. Uh, talking of which, got a really nice E-75 replay coming up in the near future for you. Bit of a heartbreak game, but monster damage and an absolute bounce fest in a Tier 10 match. So I'm sure you guys will like that. Anyway, Tumas is moving in now. He's coming in fast. Fires on the move at the E-75, gets a, a, an above average damage roll and is a good shot to be honest. The, uh, these guns don't normally like firing on the move, they uh, prefer to be fully aimed. They like to miss whenever they can. Gets his reload, pops around the barn, puts one through the lower front plate of the E-75 and finishes him off. 
Now it's just a KV-5 to deal with, so he parks up behind him to stop him sort of turning or manoeuvring and plants one through the back of his turret. That's two us up to 6k damage, and now his team are capping. Pretty much the game is secured, there's only a Super Pershing left and he spent the entire game hiding, so let's go and have a look at the end game score screen. And well played Tumas, great round. And here we are at the end game score screen for Tumas WOT's round on Red Shear. Um, as you can see that was Tumas' ace tanker badge in the WZ120. He got his mastery that game, and rightly so, it was a really great game. He also picked himself up a top gun for achieving more than 6 kills and a high calibre for doing the most amount of damage in the game as well as a defender medal for really helping save his team uh, at the end there and stopping the enemy E75 and KV5 from capping the game. So let's have a little look at the team score page. As you can see that was 1524 base experience for Tumas, really great round, 6043 damage with 7 kills and also those three medals that he picked up. And I uh, just want a, a special shout out there to uh, Guz Diker in the Egg Panther 2, the guy that was acting like a complete arsehole the entire game. Very happy to see that he had a crap round, and so he deserved it. I hope his team reported him for giving away team positions, because that's just not on. Definitely, as you say, he gets the arsehole of the day award. Now, if we go over to the detailed report, um, you can see that Tumas fired 22 shots, out of the 22 he fired, he hit 18. Out of the 18 he hit, he penned 17 for his 6,043 damage. And he also did 1,607 uh, assistance damage there through the spotting that he did at the beginning of the game, so very nice. Travelled three uh, over 3 uh, kilometres as well. Long rounds, plenty of driving about, great medium tank play. Now, with his uh, premium account, he got himself 84,432 credits that game. And even with deductions for repairs to the vehicle and ammunition costs, still came away with a really, really healthy uh, 55,500 profit of credits at tier 9. So that's really great. Now, if you enjoyed this round, please stay tuned to my channel. Um, I've got a great E75 game coming up, as well as plenty more uh, ideas and replays in the pipeline. Of course, if you enjoyed this replay, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. That really, really helps me out. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and you'll be kept up to date for future content as it comes out. And not only that, you'll be eligible for potentially in the future being on subscriber replays yourself if you send me a great replay. Anyway, I've been Pricey. As always, you guys have been awesome. And I'll see you on the next one.